Hello everyone. This is image 12 for the Summer Interpretation Seminar course for D3 students at the University of Minnesota. On this radiograph, we are going to evaluate the concept of sclerosing osteitis. On this peripical radiograph, the second molar is partially obturated. We can see a low density area in the interradicular region. Compared to the first molar, the peripical area of both the roads have slightly low density. Beyond the low density area, we see an area of increased density. The trabecular pattern is lost. A good trabecular pattern is such that if you have a fine pencil, you will be able to draw this. In this area, that pattern is lost. It's fuzzy. Also, we do not see a distinct border of this radiopacity. It seems that the radiopacity ends here. Maybe, maybe it ends here. See, we are having a difficulty. This difficulty is one of the radiographic features. We are unable to define the border of the radiopacity. We are also unable to define the border of the radiolucency. Maybe the radiolucency ends here. Uh, maybe it ends here. So these radiopacities have different shades of gray. Such findings are called zone of transition. So we have two findings here. One is the area of low density and one is the area of increased density. The disease process is peripical inflammation of the bone. We will call this as osteitis. As we saw on the radiograph, there are two types of findings, a radiolucency and a radiopacity. The radiolucent area is called rarefying osteitis, and the dense area is called sclerosing osteitis. Many clinicians will use the term condensing osteitis in place of sclerosing osteitis. So these two terms are synonymous. Sclerosing osteitis is a better term. Do not, do not use the term condensing osteitis. The bone does not get condensed or compressed. Similarly, there is scleroderma, nothing called condensoderma. There is atherosclerosis, not atherocondensosis. Sclerosis means the tissue becomes harder or are replaced by denser tissues. Coming back to the peripical radiograph. This part is the rarefying osteitis. This part is the sclerosing osteitis. Two sides of the same coin. Let's review the findings of this tooth on a cross-sectional imaging. So on this small field of view CBCT scan, same tooth here with partially endodontically treated and that's the area of sclerosis and this is the area of rarefaction. This blue line indicates the slice here. So this is the mesial root, and here is the area of sclerosis. What we can see here as we scroll through, this is the area of sclerosis and this is the area of rarefaction. There is no expansion of the cortical plate. In some cases, you may see perforation of the cortex. This is the inferior alveolar canal and that's the irregular area of radiopacity. And you can appreciate that the sclerosis is somewhere here compared to the other part of the alveolar bone. So these all areas are sclerotic bones compared to the other areas. And this is the normal looking bone here. These are normal looking trabecular bone. So the location of sclerosing osteitis is most commonly in the peripical region. The tooth is non-vital or it could be any other location of infection. The border and density of sclerosing osteitis will also provide critical clues for the diagnosis. In case of sclerosing osteitis, the border is poorly defined. You will have a difficulty in describing the exact location of the sclerosing osteitis. There will be a zone of transition slowly fading into normal trabecular pattern. The density is mixed with areas of radiopacity and areas of radiolucency. You will see altered trabecular pattern. The effect on adjacent structures include displacement of the lamina dura. 
Maybe in some cases it will have a loss of the lamina dura. On the maxillary arch, you may see the sinus floor is displaced. If this lesion is near the inferior alveolar canal, the canal wall could be sclerosed as well. The differential diagnosis would include dense bone island, peripical cementosis dysplasia, hypercementosis, and cementoblastoma. Earlier we had discussed the concept of blessed format. Again, using the blessed format of description, it is easy to arrive at the correct diagnosis. As we had discussed earlier on this different video, a dense bone island is associated with a tooth that is vital. The pedial space of such a tooth is intact, the border is well defined, and the density is uniform or homogeneous. We had discussed this radiograph earlier, showing the example of periapical cement osseous dysplasia. A periapical cement osseous dysplasia is also easy to identify. In the later stages, there are irregular radiopacities surrounded by an irregular band of radiolucency. A periapical cement osseous dysplasia is most common in middle-aged females of African heritage. We had also discussed cementoblastoma. A cementoblastoma can be painful, usually it's circular, surrounded by a band of radiolucency followed by a radiopaque band, and the roots may be resolved. The hypercementosis is easy to identify, the tooth is vital, the radiopacity is homogeneous, there is a well-defined pedial space around the mass, and the root shape may become bulbous. Let's stop here. Thank you very much. Come back again for another video.